Hello, welcome to this Hurricane Helene update. Helene now making its way into Georgia. This is the, the sad light image. In fact, I will refresh. Oh, actually, let me get you the enhanced one. Hold on a second. All right, that's the old radar. Let's get the new. Yeah, let's take a look at the latest radar here. Uh, I got the weather channel going in the background, so we're going to listen to that as well. But you see Valdosta now in that eye wall, uh, and they're dealing with some pretty rough conditions. They just lost power. Uh, their substation went down, probably, because the whole city went out. Um, and this is all making its way northward here. Um, I'm trying to find the enhanced. Here it is. Here's the enhanced one. Let's uh, go to the enhanced one. So the center is starting to make its way. Oh, yeah, it's in Georgia now. Yep, so uh, Helene is now in Georgia. Hurricane Helene now in Georgia. So let's get the latest Hurricane Helene update from the Hurricane Center. Uh, let's see, let's, the latest public advisory. That's 11 p.m. Let's get the latest one at 12 here. Eye wall of extremely dangerous category for hurricane moving quickly inland over the Florida pan panhandle. Panhandle. Helene continues to produce catastrophic winds that are pushing further inland over the Florida Big Band and Florida Panhandle and will or have entered southeast Georgia. This was already old information. Um, so uh, a, a, the, the Perry Airport waited, reported a wind gust of 99 miles an hour. Cedar Key, 8.68 feet above higher, high water and the, the, the clear water breach area. Record storm surge in a lot of these areas, and that wasn't even close to where the center of this thing is. It's location 30.3 north, 83.6 west, about 80 miles north-northwest of Cedar Key, Florida, about 45 miles east-southeast of Tallahassee, Florida. It's still at the maximum staying winds at 140 miles an hour and moving north-northeast to 24 miles an hour. Minimum central pressure 938 millibars, 27.70 inches, and this is as of midnight. So it's about 40 minutes ago. Uh, uh, but this storm is just not slowing down anytime soon. It's moving, and it's holding its strength. That's just the thing. It's holding its strength, uh, and that's what's making this storm so interesting. Uh, so let's go look at some of the weather observations here uh, that we have. And you can see some of these wind gusts. There's 69 miles an hour reported at Lake City. Let's see if we can find, um, find Georgia here. 75 mile an hour wind gusts on the back side. On the back side at uh, Perry Foley Airport. That's the back side of the storm. So... Just because the eye has passed, uh, you're going to get right back into the, some very strong winds on the other side of the storm as well. And they've gotten a lot of rain, too, as a result of this. Well, obviously, that's that's the other part of the storm. Let's see if we can find uh, Valdosta. Yep, 70-mile-an-hour wind gust at Valdosta, Airport, uh, Londis Lond County. East gusting to 70. They're 33, but a gust to 70. 2A, the pressure is down to 2.882 2 inches. Look at this one, 2.830 inches at Alondas County Utilities. South at 20, gusting to 72. So well over hurricane force. 80 mile an hour wind gust at Madison right now. Northeast to 47, gusting to 80. Uh, so these are some pretty... Uh, Pretty bad conditions here. 80, this is well inland here. We're seeing 80 mile an hour wind gusts. Hamilton Crossroads here. Um, is that, what is that? 81? 81 mile an hour wind gusts at Mayo. Um, 80 mile an hour wind gusts. It has a lot of sites gusting over hurricane force. And uh, yeah, you can see the wind gusts even farther from the storm. There's some pretty strong winds even all the way on the east coast look at the 63 mile an hour wind gust at jacksonville another jacksonville wind gust to 68 um and this is really far from the center so it's just remarkable how big this storm is and what a big area is impacting um 51 mile an hour wind gust at this buoy here wave heights 10.5 feet um and again on the south side of the storm you're dealing with this record storm surge that's coming to some of these places let's see if we can uh Maybe get some buoys here. Cedar Key. I'm curious as to how high Cedar Key got with wind gusts. Yeah, we're missing data. Not surprising, considering the conditions. They are completely flooded. The whole the whole thing is underwater. Um, 
get some wave heights here. Let's see. 13.5 feet in the Egmont channels. That's that's high. It's really high. So we still have the hurricane warning, obviously, in effect for this area of Florida into Georgia. Surrounded by the tropical storm warnings. We've got a whole bunch of things going on here. Um, and uh, we'll go now to the radar. So let's take a look at that. That's an old radar image, so we'll update. And you'll see where it is now. And here's the center of it right here, Valdosta again. I think I did update this. I think I had two open. It's kind of hard to remember everything here. But here's Valdosta right here, so they're getting hammered. Let's go look at the power edge situation now. Uh, over a million now without power, and Georgia is now in the red as well. So Florida, 1.2, over 1.2 million customers now without power, um, and mainly in this part of the state here where we have mostly complete blackouts. So... Uh, complete outages in this in this area mostly um uh, there's probably not a light to be found in this area unless it's on a generator uh, considering the winds uh, and you can clearly see the path of of the storm here and even the tallahassee area uh tallahassee also uh getting into some of this as well but luckily tallahassee escaped the worst of it it went to the east uh, but now Georgia is now getting involved in these power outages, too. We have 146,789, mostly in the southern part of the state. You can see you have complete, a lot of complete outages. They have Loundus, which is where, uh, where that city in Georgia is that I was talking about. They are mostly out. Uh, so um, yeah, the city in Georgia, Valdosta. Yeah, so Valdosta in Loundus County, they're out as well. So uh, you're seeing... Uh, these kind of winds will damage the transmission system. There's nothing that's going to be able to, you know, you're going to have the line slapping together and tripping out the uh, tree ran tree branches and debris going into the all this stuff. So it's very hard for any kind of power grid to really withstand um, withstand this. This is uh, pretty uh, pretty substantial, and this is all going to be heading north into Georgia. All right, so. Uh, they all have a bunch of different electric companies here. You have Georgia Power, which is the largest electric company in Georgia. Um, we'll be looking at some of these other maps um, time, but a lot of these, a lot of these in the other area, the Florida Panhandle, you got a lot of cooperatives over here. Uh, so you got Suwannee River, obviously, who've obviously lost almost everything uh, at this point. They probably have no, no uh, transmission at all whatsoever. Um, and you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, this is. Uh, We'll have another update a little later on here. And again, this is, again, the storm right here. Still lightning with it, I think. Um, so let's go here. We still have lightning. Uh, let's go to GLM flash intensity here. Still seeing some lightning. Not as much, so I think it's peaked, and now it's going to slowly weaken. But you can remember it's getting that energy from that upper-level system. So uh, this, is, this is the issue that we're going to have to worry about here um, as this heads further into Georgia. Uh, and we kind of went over the models here, and we'll, we will do we will do so again. Um, we will use the um, models and show you show you the models again, and show you the winds uh, that we're going to be dealing with here. And again, you can see the wind gusts that we're dealing with here. That dark black area there is Valdosta. Obviously, it's passed. It's going to be passing there, and then it's going to be going up into uh, up, up into the middle part of Georgia here. Um, Atlanta, let's see if we can find Atlanta on here. There's a Perry in Georgia, too. Um, it has the horse winds on the right side of the storm, um, but still the west side can still get some Augusta, for instance. Here's Atlanta right here. So uh, it, it will impact part of the metro, metro Atlanta area with some of these strong winds, too, um, at least especially the east side. And you can see some of these really strong winds. It's going to hold its energy until tomorrow morning. And then we're still going to be dealing with it even as we get into tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of wind. And it's going to be a... And then we have also all the rainfall that we're going to have here. Uh, we can look at uh, this three-hour precipitation forecast. You can see all the rain that's going to fall in these areas. Another three inches of rain at least uh, is going to fall in these areas here. Um, so... This is, uh, I mean, I'm not really, like, not going to spend too much time on the models. We're just kind of watching the storm as it makes its way northward and uh, causes all kinds of problems. And uh, the next uh, update will be in, an, uh, I guess, one more update, and then i got to try to get some sleep. But uh, this is, uh, 
This is going to be a really rough night here. 69 mile an hour wind gusts now at Moody Air Force Base. So, and again, all the power going out. In, uh, this will be the, nights, the, light, the night the lights went out in Georgia. I know there's a song called that, but uh, yeah, that is what's going to happen in a lot of Georgia.